been ready to do this since three thirty this morning. So excited. <laughs> I just want to say welcome to everyone. It is so good to see everyone. Oh, you know, we're going to spring. We have over 90 advocates here today, and we're some 115 of you out there in virtual land. We have three meetings that with legislators. So excited about that. Our board members here today, I want to recognize uh, Eva Lashley and Amber Scott. I want to say thank you so much staff of OTBN for organizing today's event. I know how much work we did into this. Especially a thank you to Lisa to Peter and to the individual. Very rare are you. I want to say also to stick around at the end because we're going to try to get a picture of all of you. We want to capture this momentous uh, occasion. So it would be nice that someday you don't have to ask for money. Well, we're headed in that right direction. You know, remember just a few years ago, we didn't have a line item in the state budget. Sarah asked me, what's the number one goal? Well, what's the goal? And I said, Mary, the number one goal is to get a line item in the state budget. Well, she recently disclosed to me that while I was saying this, this made me. Crazy. It wouldn't be the first time somebody thought that or said that about me. But you know, he was right. It is so hard to get a line item in the state budget. And we were starting from scratch. But look at where we are now. Governor Hawaii put $20 million in his state budget. Attorney Ghost put $20 million in his state budget. Hey, we're going to get a Legislators to keep that $20 million in their budget. And to do that, ODN created some additional talking points this year that I am super excited about. We're going to tell them hey, it's not just a private issue, it affects the entire state. The economic impact of domestic violence is over $436 million a year in the state of Ohio. And that is going to be information that will be very helpful today when you come across those legislators who aren't so inclined to support domestic violence programs. And we're going to tell them that you be spilled over into the workforce, and that can be costly. And victims across the country lose almost 8 million days of work a year. And 83% of respondents to a national survey said their abusers disrupted their ability to work. 53% of those said they lost their jobs because of the abuse. We're telling legislators about the return on investing in our domestic violence programs. ODVN has study done it, and it showed that more than $32 million was saved in short-term costs, such as medical care, law enforcement, emergency response, and legal fees. And Bethany House recently did a study that showed that for every $1 invested in their domestic violence program, they saved $65 in social costs. Our talking points today, the economic impact, the return on investment, and next, how cuts impact our programs. Since 2019, ODDN member programs have withstood those crippling cuts to their most important federally funded source, victims of crime. ODDN survey is 76 member program to measure the impact of these cuts. And now our board chair, Donnie Buchanan, will tell you what our survey found. Um, so last year, because of insufficient funding, domestic violence program across the state of Ohio turned away about a third of their survivors. That was vital that Ohio legislators approve the $20 million in additional funding for domestic violence services that Governor DeWine and Attorney General Dave Hill have included in Ohio's next budget. Since 2019, cuts to VOCA has had a devastating effect on our 76 member programs. So in that same study, Ohio's program sheltered about 10,000 survivors, but nearly 6,000 of them were turned away. 
that's about 36% of survivors and their children had to go somewhere else, likely returning to care. The program services provided services to 73,000 people. They didn't spend the night in shelter, but they needed services. Those victims were seeking support, support groups, whether it was legal advocacy, housing assistance, or any other supportive services. And nearly 20% of our programs reported that they were unable to meet those needs. Our programs answered more than 91,000 hearts. And about 20% of the programs weren't able to answer all because of that nature. More than 40% of our programs reported reducing or eliminating services, the child advocate services, which usually the children's services are the the first in the class. A quarter of our programs turned away survivors seeking assistance with a protection order or court advocacy because of staffing shortages. 43% of those programs, our member programs, um, have mental health professionals, and 22% had to reduce mental health professional due to that. So in order to provide emergency services, more than half of our programs eliminated or cut programs that were focused on the states. The additional $20 million in domestic violence funding that Governor DeWine and Attorney General Yost are recommending would help our programs address these deficiencies and services. With more state support, we could reduce the number of survivors turned away from emergency shelters. We can make it possible for our programs to hire more staff and the crisis call, and we could get more child So today, as you talk to Ohio legislators, please tell them that this funding increase is the right thing to do. And so now, our legislative champions, please join me in welcoming Representative Allison Russo, who is the Minority Leader of the Ohio Representative. Well, good morning to all of you. I'm so happy to be here. I am Allison Russo. I'm a state representative for House of Southern and I'm here in Franklin County. I'm working with Columbus and some of our suburbs on the western side. I am also the Ohio House Minority Leader, and I am very pleased to to all of you for your advocacy day. It is always great to see you here uh, in our hallways, uh, over in the State House, reaching out, sharing your stories um, with legislators. Um, I do want to to know that before I ever became a state representative, uh, I actually spent 20 years in public health policy. Um, advising uh, on how we deliver better care and have better outcomes for some of our most vulnerable populations. Um, and I especially have a real passion for advocating and improving those outcomes um, for women and families. So I'm very extremely honored to be here today talking to you for just a few minutes uh, before you start your day. When People often come to the State House. Uh, I speak to many groups like yours who are here to advocate for issues. They ask me, you know, how can, what can you do to make a difference in the work that we do here at the State House? And my answer is really always the same, and that is, you know, the personal stories. The personal stories are so impactful uh, for people, especially my colleagues. Uh, to understand where you're coming from and what it is that you are going through or you have been through in the past. I think this group does all too well the importance of speaking up and being heard. And that is what uh, we are very lucky to have one of the highest largest domestic violence programs choices. The need wasn't so great, but we are very fortunate to have this program. Uh, in 2022, Swiss entered 3,685 crisis calls and provided more than 48,000 bed nights to survivors. Despite all of that support and dedicated work, Swiss still had to turn away 
436 survivors from taking emergency, emergency shelter because the need is so great. We can all agree that one person turned away is too many. And that's why we need the proper funding for not only choices, but also all the other ODBN uh, 76 member programs that deserve the support uh, to give the power back to our survivors of relationship abuse, because right now, Ohio is not providing that support. Uh, on a per capita basis, Ohio spent only 32 cents last fiscal year. That is dead last in domestic violence uh, services compared to our surrounding states. And just to give you an idea, the Pennsylvania spent $1.56 per capita, West Virginia spent $1.41 per capita, and even Kentucky spent $2.54 per capita. We are only spending $0.32 cents per capita. We can do better than that. Our, our survivors of domestic violence deserve better than that. And that's why it's so important that OBDN gets the $20 million in this budget that has been allocated in addition to the $20 million total that was allocated to the domestic violence program. That $20 million line item, amongst many great things, helped our shelters serve more survivors and reduce the number who are thrown away. It will save money in the long run. We know that. It will begin to address the deficit in youth legal and prevention services, which is ultimately what we want to do is prevent even one victim from having community services. And most importantly, most importantly, it will save lives. So here's what I want you to say. I want you to not only share your stories, but listen to the stories of those who are here alongside you. And I want you to never start stop fighting for what you know is right. Make sure your voice and everyone's voice in ODBN is heard. And that means talking to your local leaders at all levels of government, in your schools, at your community centers, in your town halls. And it also means going to talk to your state legislators, which I encourage you to do after this event. If you can't get in to see them personally, Follow up with them, meet them back in your district as well, um, and tell them why you fight so hard on this issue. Tell them about the loved ones that have been impacted by domestic violence, and tell them that with their help and funding, together we can all prevent the spread of domestic violence and return power back to survivors. Thank you so much for your advocacy, and good luck today. Most important job today was to introduce next my uh, colleague and dear friend, and really put in this fight. I mean, I tell you that you have no better advocate at the state house uh, than Representative Chavia Galanzi. Uh, I mean that sincerely. So, Representative Galanzi, thank you. Well, good morning. I am State Representative Chavia Galanzi. And I'm proud to serve the people of Ohio's 33rd House District. I would like to start by thanking the Ohio Domestic Violence Network for inviting me to speak at their advocacy day this year. ODBN does such incredible work for Ohio's impacted by intimate partner violence. And I am so honored and privileged to be a part of this important day. My commitment to the issue of domestic violence began long before I came to the legislature. As a juvenile court magistrate, I often interacted with children and families who were experiencing domestic violence at home. As a domestic uh, relations court magistrate, I um, adjudicated and disposed of several civil, many actually, civil protection order cases and found myself deeply involved in the world of domestic violence. As a staff attorney at Community Legal Aid, I lost a client through domestic violence. No one ever wants to receive that phone call from the hospital. I also, for years, sat on the Summit County Domestic Violence Coalition and really spent a lot of important evidence-based information about treatment and prevention. I was a board member also for the Battered Women Shelter in Akron. While the physical and emotional impact of domestic violence cannot be understated, 
people less familiar with this issue are often unaware of the significant economic effects that are also associated with the tobacco products. Just as you heard earlier, the estimated annual cost of intimate partner violence in Ohio is over $436 million. It is costing our state millions to not support efforts to stop the cycle of domestic violence. By investing in shelters and services like those provided by ODPN, we can not only save Ohio communities money, we can save the lives of survivors and their families. We work for you. The best way to bring issues to legislators' attention is through your advocacy. Whether that be through phone calls, emails, letters, or advocacy days like this one you are having today. Your stories are impactful and can often teach legislators about issues that they don't know affected their constituents so deeply. While not every legislator may agree with you, it is crucial to make your voices heard. Let them know that you are watching. Thank you for all that you do to raise awareness about domestic violence in our state. Your efforts do not go unnoticed, and I am fighting for you here in Columbus. Thank you. Thank you to our wonderful legislative champions who showed up here today with those inspiring comments. Next, we have a survivor story, Krista Hullaby will tell us how important her domestic violence program was to her. She has gone on to start a mentally expressing, expressive uh, organization with a mission to bring awareness about domestic violence. Please welcome Chris Allen. Close your eyes and visualize with me. You are an unwed teenage mother living in an income-based apartment, paying $2 for rent, receiving Title 20 daycare assistance, food stamps, medical, and a welfare check, all while trying to finish college. On top of that pressure, you have to work extra hard to maintain a peer system in front of strangers, family, and friends, because you don't want them to know that that hairline fracture on your elbow Happened because your son's father slapped their abuser, slammed you on the hard towel floor in your kitchen. The reason you haven't been around for three weeks is due to have a bad eye and a busted lip. Or you're in the hospital yet again with another concussion, but you told the medical staff that you fainted and you don't know what happened. You endure weekly to daily cycles of slaps and punches with constant verbal assault. To you and your kids. You're afraid to go to your own home because your abuser is leaving with you against your will. You smile when you want to cry, which makes that smile a total lie. I am she and she is me. Greetings, my name is Krista Hellaby and I am a survivor of domestic violence. Thank you. A key factor to my survival was the Artemis Center of Dating. A domestic violence resource agency. Of course, I had the help of my family and friends, but that was after they found out about the abuse. By the time I had, by that time, I had already left my youth. Artemis Center of Dating gave me the courage that I needed to leave. They, the advocates helped me realize that the abuse was not my fault, and I was not to blame. They helped me regain my confidence in me. They help me find additional resources that enable me to not be afraid to parent my child on my own. After I left my abuser, they helped me attain my first restraining order, the one of many, against him. They helped me navigate the court process. They empowered me to be strong and courageous. They were my backbone to standing up against my abuser, and I am forever thankful to them. Without the support of a domestic violence resource agency, I don't know what my current quality of life would be, but I know one fact that would not be. I would now have a master's degree and a career and be in a marriage of over 10 years, a healthy, non-abusive marriage. That is my current reality due to, to every advocate that has ever wondered if what you do matters, it does. 
to Governor Mike DeWine and Attorney General Dave Yo, two great men who have included $20 million for domestic violence services in their proposed budget. Thank you. To the legislators, please take the time to research and understand a huge impact this funding will have in the fight against domestic violence. Did you know, according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, on a typical day, there are more than 20,000 calls placed through domestic violence hotlines nationwide. And on average, 20 people, both men and women, are physically abused per minute in the USA. Help Ohio lessen this number. Approval of this funding will help many victims of domestic violence, from the poor single mother on welfare to the man that just put a little dab of makeup on his eye to hide that he had a black eye before his morning Zoom call. Enable others to be able to stand tall and be able to say the same thing I wasn't once able to say. Don't call me a victim. Call me a survivor. Enable someone to be a survivor today. Good morning. My name is Wendy Waters Pinnell, the Chief Executive Officer of YWCA Hamilton, located in Butler County. And Krista, thank you for this amazing bravery because it is stories like yours that continue to inspire the rest of us to do this good work. My job here this morning is to share a program narrative with you. YWCA Hamilton started a domestic violence shelter in 1979 called the Dove House. It was seven rooms, sleeping rooms with lots of cots in them, there were bathrooms, a common kitchen, a common living room, a common playroom. And yet the number of domestic violence survivors grew every single year. During the pandemic, they tripled. So I want to share with you one statistic, and that is that Butler County is one of the highest per capita incidents of domestic violence in the state of Ohio. We have two amazing legislators who have supported YWCA, Senator George, George Lang and Representative Sarah Carruthers. In the year 2022, YWCA, Bell House Crisis Hotline, took 1,366 calls requesting shelter. Of those, we could not house a thousand and twenty. A thousand and twenty survivors could not be saved. Because we knew that this was increasing during the pandemic, we advocated for a larger shelter. And with those legislators' help, we were able to build a 15 one bedroom shelter facility fully furnished. In December of 2022, we moved in. And because of this brand new shelter, we'll be able to triple the number of families that we can serve. Colleagues, legislators, you're acting to make a difference. YWCA Hamilton stands here today as evidence of that. We will save more lives because you believed in what we were doing as important. We know more children are being harmed and are dying in domestic violence incidences in the state of Ohio. Please make sure, as we're meeting with legislators, that they know and understand this frightening trend. We must end violence against women and children, and it is in a hand in hand opportunity in working with our legislators that that happens. I thank Senator Lane and I thank Representative Carruthers for their courage to stand and advocate on our behalf when funding is very limited. But I also thank Governor DeWine and Attorney General Yost for their courage to add 20 million in their budget. Let's make sure that that stays in the budget. I thank you for the chance to speak here as an operator of a domestic violence shelter, as an ODB and board member, as a childhood survivor of domestic violence. Thank you. 
Thank you, Wendy. That really puts the spotlight on the need that is out there. I was shocked about it. So grateful you had legislative champions in your district. We have more legislative champions who are appearing today by video. They plan to be here, but the General Assembly, as I said, is in session and they had meeting that coincided with our program. But we are happy that they are here. There are a number of them, and they are also not only our champions, but they are ODBN's Fashion Family Award winners from the past couple of years. Hello, I'm State Representative Cindy Abrams. Thank you for inviting me to participate. I am sorry I can't be with you in person. As a former Cincinnati police officer, I responded to many 911 calls for domestic violence. One of my top priorities is keeping people safe, and that is reflected in the bills that I have sponsored. House Bill 254 from last General Assembly is a bill that I hope will make a difference for domestic violence survivors. It creates a pathway for counties and regions to establish domestic violence fatality review boards throughout the state, which are tailored to meet each county and region's needs. My hope is that the review boards will work to prevent domestic violence fatalities. I support Governor DeWine's recommendation in our budget because our domestic violence organizations around the state are doing a fantastic job helping survivors of domestic violence. The need is great, especially when 19% of the Ohio Domestic Violence Network's programs are unable to provide some services to survivors, and one-fifth of programs are not able to answer crisis calls because of lack of staff. It is important for advocates to participate in advocacy days and meet with legislators because you are all the people with firsthand experiences and you can use that to communicate and educate us on where there are needs. Outside of advocacy days, you can invite us on a tour of your facility. Show us the difference you're making in the lives of the survivors. Thank you, Ohio Domestic Violence Network, for the work that you do. I hope you enjoy your advocacy day here at the State House. Good morning. I'm State Senator Stephanie Kunze. I'm currently serving my second term in the Ohio Senate, representing the people of the 16th Senate District, which encompasses all of Madison and Pickaway counties and a portion of Franklin County. My schedule will not allow me to be present with you at the event this morning, but please know the work you do each and every day does not go unnoticed. Throughout my time in the legislature, I have been a strong voice for policies promoting women in the workplace, women entrepreneurs, as well as programs that empower women to seek and hold elective office. In addition, I have been on a mission to be a voice and a champion of legislation in hopes to deliver justice for victims and survivors of sexual violence. During my time in the Senate, I have sponsored bills that have helped those who have been trafficked to expunge their records, gain a certificate of qualification for employment, and increase penalties for promoting prostitution. For the last four General Assemblies, I have sponsored legislation to make strangulation a felony in the state of Ohio. I am grateful to report that this measure was incorporated into a sweeping criminal justice reform bill and passed in Senate Bill 288. With the enactment of this bill, Ohio joined 49 other states that recognize the additional dangers of strangulation. By changing strangulation from a misdemeanor to a felony, we are creating a cooling off period to allow victims to seek legal, medical, and other assistance that could ensure women are survivors and are connected to valuable resources. Speaking of, I have worked to see these very valuable resources that they need are available throughout the Buckeye State. In 2019, thanks to your partnership and advocacy, we gave $1 million annually to state domestic violence programs. This was the first time a line item was included in Ohio State budget. In 2021, again, with your help, we championed an increase to this funding to $7.5 million over the biennium. Without your advocacy, members of the General Assembly would be less aware of the need for funding, the shelter and programming it supports that represent our urban and rural areas, the positive impact it has on the lives of so many. The Ohio Domestic Violence Network, through your commitment to ending violence against all people, is a valuable voice in supporting victims of domestic violence and their families. 
I am humbled to continue to lend my voice to your efforts, and I will continue to fight for Ohioans in vulnerable situations. Thank you for your unwavering commitment to ensuring survivors are able to rebuild their lives, create systemic change, so all Ohioans are free to live violence free. Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry I cannot be there in person, but I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak to you this morning. I am Matt Dolan, I am a state senator, but prior, I've also been a lawyer for 33 years, and early in my career, I served as an assistant prosecutor in Jauga County, where unfortunately, uh, I dealt with domestic abuse. Domestic abuse knows no race, it knows no gender, it knows no religion, it knows no uh, economic status. It is unfortunately a, a part of our lives that needs to stop. And one of the ways we can stop it is to have advocation like you guys each and every day coming down here and saying, the more we bring awareness, the more we bring uh, people to, to justice, and the more we bring people to healing, we can end domestic violence. You know, when I faced it, there's two issues that just stuck with me in all this time. One is, you know, prosecutors are primarily male and primarily victims of domestic violence are female. So imagine how traumatic that is for the female victim to come in and have to tell her story again and again to a male prosecutor, and then ultimately you know, to, to maybe a male judge. You know, what, is, what, what, what struck me is having that advocate be with that person from the get-go was so, so important. So that they began, the, the, the uh, idea of trust began right away, that I understand that as a prosecutor, I'm trying to help, but also that the avenues for help for the victim are, are very apparent, and getting them into shelters, and getting them in with, with children to their shelters. Because the second takeaway is, the victim of the domestic violence is usually a woman, but the number of victims impacted can be multiple. It can be kids, it can be parents, it could be brothers and sisters, all of which I feel the negative impact of having a loved one be a victim of domestic abuse. So you coming down to Columbus and sharing your stories, telling every legislature why it is so important that we not only invest in domestic violence prevention, but domestic violence healing, finding the shelter so families can stay together, having those advocates immediately uh, working with the police and working with the prosecutor's office, so uh, trust forms. So thank you for coming down today. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your work on behalf of victims throughout the state of Ohio. And let's hope that each year your statistics, your statistics go down uh, and we don't have to deal with this issue uh, as much as we have to, to date, unfortunately. So thank you, and uh, hopefully I'll see you around the State House somewhere later today. I'm Ohio Senate Minority Leader Nikki Antonio. I'm proud to represent Ohio's 23rd Senate District, which includes the majority of Cleveland, Lakewood, Parma, Parma Heights, and Bratnall. I was first elected to the Ohio Senate in 2018 after serving eight years in the Ohio House of Representatives. Before my time in the General Assembly, I was a Lakewood City Council member, the executive director of an outpatient drug alcohol treatment program for women, and a teacher for children with special needs. Domestic violence has always been an issue I've worked on over the years. It touches every single one of our communities. Millions of women in the United States are physically assaulted by an intimate partner every year. It's estimated that one in three women in the United States will experience domestic abuse in their lifetime. In 2022, Ohio recorded 112 domestic violence deaths. 22 of these were children, which was a record. All were terrible tragedies. Over the years, I've worked on numerous pieces of legislation to address domestic violence issues. Senator Stephanie Kunze and I worked together to pass legislation last General Assembly that finally made strangulation a felony offense in Ohio. 
I've also worked on legislation that would end the statute of limitations on rape and sexual assault. We'll continue to work on that, as well as joint-sponsored legislation with Senator Nathan Manning that prohibits a person from knowingly installing an electronic tracking device on another person's property without their consent. I plan to reintroduce and joint sponsor this legislation again in this current General Assembly. I worked with my colleagues to create the original domestic violence line item in the 133rd General Assembly, and I commend Governor DeWine on his budget proposal that recommends an increase in funding for this critical work. This 10 million annually 20 in the biennium total allocation to the domestic violence program will enhance the capacity of programs across the state and meet the needs of survivors currently unable to access services. Providing intervention resources and support to survivors and families experience domestic violence is imperative. I applaud the Ohio Domestic Violence Network, all of you, for your role in survivor advocacy and assistance. Thank you for your advocacy, your testimony, and your participation in ODVN's Advocacy Day. I'm sorry I can't be with you, but I want to thank you for the dedication of advocates like you that we were able to originally create the DV support line item, and now we must continue to advocate for increased funding to expand the capacity of current programs to better address the complex needs of survivors. Always remember, you are the experts of your story. Your advocacy is invaluable when talking to legislators, especially ones that represent you in the district. You have the opportunity to share how domestic violence programs and organizations have directly had an impact on your life, so we can make sure every survivor will have access to the same. Thank you so much for all you do to make Ohio a better place for all of us. Wow, wasn't that great? Uh, my name is Mary Gordy. I'm the Executive Director of ODN. Thank you so much for being here today. I want to thank Leader Russo and Representative Delonsky for taking the time to be here in person. I'm very thankful to the legislators who gave us the terrific video statement. Um, I want to, before I give you your last bit of marching orders, I want to remind you, please come up to the podium, come up here to the stage, before you go off to your meetings, we'd love to take a picture to show we've got a tremendously good, large group of people here who are going to go out and spend the rest of the, of the day advocating increased funding for our program. Okay, guys, now it's time to get to work. We have about 25 survivors who are registered today to meet with legislators. We have about 40 meetings set up. The most important thing for you to do today is to explain to these legislators why it is imperative that they support keeping that 20 million in the budget. The most important question you have to ask today is do you support, will you support keeping that funding in the budget? Please do not leave your meeting without having asked that question, and we hope got an answer. Four years ago, Ohio spent zero dollars, zero general fund dollars on DV services. Because of your work, because of all of our work over the last four years, we're in a much stronger position today. But we're not at the finish line yet. We will be a lot closer after the day is done. 